Well, 10 o'clock here, October 2nd. We got the blog up last night about 3 a.m. So if you guys got the chance to watch the hunt from yesterday, appreciate it. Thank you for the comments and the, uh, you know, recommendations on what you would do strategy-wise. And I know it seems pretty crazy what we're doing. You know, you got a big deer, don't get aggressive. It's early, you're going to bump them out. But I've kept saying it. And I just really think we're already on a time schedule with this buck. You know, the corn comes out, it's going to shift everything. And frankly, I just don't think we have the best places to shoot him. And, you know, maybe this heat that we've got is really a saving grace getting him up earlier on his feet. I think we're tied to his bed. Confirmed that last night. I think the heat is incentivizing him to get up out of that bed to go drink. And then he's right there browsing on clover. So one comment that caught my eye the last night on YouTube was how if we moved you know it would hurt us from the ability to you know exit out of the blind and that's kind of what's actually motivating me to want to make this move is if we move the blind over there worst case scenario he comes out does the same thing goes to the water in a different spot walks north that'll be walking away from us and we can let it get dark and then slip out the reason why we ejected so chaotically yesterday now it seemed more chaotic than i really think it was i mean we just kept the blind between us and his field of view the entire time but he was coming right at us and I didn't want to get stuck in that blind in the dark and have no idea when he was gone or whatever so the other thing to take into consideration I've got zero photos of this deer since September 23rd and so if I was just going off of a trail camera I'd be like ah oh, he's not there he's somewhere further away he's only here sporadically my gut's been that he's been there the whole time we just haven't had any cameras over there by the water or any of those trails and when the farmer said that he saw him on that pond dam, I was like, man, he might be doing that every day. Because there's just volunteer clover all around his mode path. So I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to move it. And maybe we screw it up and then everybody can say they were right and I was wrong. But I think we've got the conditions for him to do the exact same thing. It's just a little bit better today. The trouble is, I don't know where exactly we're going to put it. I want to get up where he went down into the water hole. Not sure how much cover we're gonna have to really even protect this hay bale blind, but we're gonna drive over there, keep the truck on, do all of our scouting from the truck. Crazy plan, see if it works. All right, well, we, uh, just got permission to use this ranger and the trailer and that is what the landowner typically is driving around every day so we really are giving ourselves the best chance to be normal so we're gonna get in this drive up put the blind on it gotta get my bow gotta get everything that I left in the blind last night winds perfect again blowing right at the house we're gonna go move it right next to all these shrubs where this buck came out last night so aggressive it might just work that patch of thick grass is where he went in from here to a 20 yard shot All right, well, we just got this blind in place. Oh, it's nice and cold. Oh, that feels good. Got this blind in place. We moved it 20 yards from here is where that buck went into the water. I saw him, we didn't get that on camera, but he came right down this pond dam. And based on what he did yesterday, he'll be broadside at 20. So this is the best that we can do. We're using this little natural uh, grass line right here. It's got some shrubs in it as our back cover. Hopefully that'll help make us fit a little bit better than just being right out in the open. But it's the best we got. I think this was the move and we'll find out tonight. Fingers crossed tonight we get a shot. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. See ya. Kill him. Yes, ma'am. I forgot my hat. Well, 
here it is. Night two, chasing this deer. We made the move today, midday, the hay bed line. Some said it was a good idea, some said we should stay. My gut told me that we needed to get over this water, so high anticipation hunt, let's go get after it. guys well 6 p.m. here and Alex and I have been set up for 25 minutes so far this pod looks beautiful and the anticipation for tonight's hunt is extremely high we are about 15 yards from where that buck when I spotted him up at that apple tree set when I saw him walk out of this tall grass go right into the pond and we're just praying for that you know broadside shot 15 yards but volunteer clover all along this pond dam Conditions are pretty nice, about mid-70s right now. It's falling still, pressure's rising. And as I'm sure most of you know, we've got that really great weather coming up. So I'm hoping that he just needs a drink a little earlier again tonight. We're in here obviously after that drop time on the MRI, but you know, that big 10 is in the area. I did have him going back to bed near this really big acorn tree that Gavin and Joy and I identified the first time we actually ever came here. 6.40 in the morning, somewhere in there, he was right there. So that creek crossing is kind of where he's at right now, but there's nothing to say he doesn't go on a stroll. He knows his water's here. I know we've got him on that camera often. And we're gonna tuck in, enjoy this nice breeze coming out of here. Once that wind does die off, like it's forecasted to, our thermals will fall right into this pond. So we're uh, gonna keep our fingers crossed for tonight's hunt. Big deer in the area. Made an aggressive move. We'll see if it pays off. Hopefully it gives us the opportunity. <laughs> 